Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com Bringing you another fly tying video this week. This one's a pretty simple one and it's a stone fly pattern. Um, a lot of my videos you'll hear me say, uh, these come from orders that customers had sent me wanting me to tie for them doing custom orders. This is one of them. This is called the Zone Stone. This is one of Josh Miller's patterns that he does real well with. And uh, whenever I had to got requested to tie it, I thought, man, I'm adding some of these to my box because everybody that knows me knows I love stoneflies. And uh, been looking for a good small pattern that I really like. And it's easy to tie that I can tie quickly. This one checks all those boxes. So um, definitely go check out Josh Miller's Trout Yeah page. Uh, he's got a great lots and lots of information out there especially if you're you're a nymph guy so check josh out great guy great youtube channel but uh today i'm going to share how i tie it very similar to how he ties it just in case you didn't know or never saw this pattern i wanted to share it with you so um here you're going to see the fly in the vise and then the material list to tie it Okay, here you see the zone stone in the vise. Let's get into tying it. Pretty simple little stone fly pattern. For a hook, I'm using the Holsinger's Fly Shop jig hooks. This is a size 12. For the bead, I have a 3.3 millimeter metallic orange slotted tungsten bead. Um, don't get caught up on the bead color. Use whatever color you want here. It's not important. The fish don't care. I'm just using this metallic orange because it matches the fly nicely. For thread, I'm using 140 denier brown. And um, again, you're not going to see much of this, so just use a dark color, I would say, for this particular color. So we're going to wrap that back here to the bend of the hook. Next thing I'm going to do is take some strip biots, strip goose biots, and uh, Dropped one there, so I have to pick another one up. You'll see they have a natural curve to them. I want to make that natural curve go out, away from the body. So I'm going to put it on the side of the fly here, and I'm going to wrap it on and get it to the length I want. The length I want is about the length of the fly. Um, you can make it a little bit long if you want. This is one that I don't care about going a little bit long on, but don't make it really, really long. And just put one on each side, like I said, turning away from the hook. So when you turn them over, they splay out real nicely there. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to wrap this back up here. And I'm going to cut these off right behind the bead. And it's going to build a little bit of body here. There we go. And then we're just going to wrap that right up to the bead. Next thing we're going to do is put on some micro stretch tubing, and this is black. And I'm just going to put that right in there, right in the slot of the bead, and tie it down. And then once I get it tied down, I'm going to stretch it real tight and wrap it back to my tail. Okay, now I'm going to use some SLF Prism, and the color I'm going to do on this one is Rusty Brown. Mess around with a couple different colors here, um, you know, blacks, golden colors. I just like the prism because it's really flashy. And also the prism, I can get a pretty tight noodle with, dubbing noodle here. So just stretch it out, get it nice and tight and nice and thin. And once I get it nice and thin, I'm just going to start wrapping back there at that tail. Make nice side-by-side -side wraps. And I'm going to wrap it up to about an eye length behind the bead. And then I'm just going to pull all that material off, the extra I had there. And then we're going to put the rib on this. And we're going to use this stretch tubing for a rib. And I'm going to pull on it pretty tight here to make it a little bit thinner. And just make nice even wraps there. You see I got like four segments. Makes a nice segmented body. Okay, now we're going to cut that stretch tube off after we put three or four wraps to hold it in place. And then we're going to come in with two more goose bites. And I'm going to put these on one at a time. And I'm going to put them on the back. 
and I'm going to angle them out away a little bit and I want them to be the length of the body. So I want them to stop right above that tail like you see there. So put two or three wraps, hold it in place, come in with the other one and I'm going to crisscross it a little bit. Do the same thing, two or three wraps, there you can see them, oops, got a little blurry there with my camera. Um, right above the where the tail join is. Then I'm going to take these two here and just fold them back over and this will lock it all in place. And then we're going to trim those tags off. So Just lift that tag up, give it a snip. Do the same with the other one. Okay, and then I'm just going to add just a touch more dubbing. Now this time I don't want a nice tight dubbing loop. I want this to be a little bit looser. Um, you could you could dubbing loop it if you want. You know, split your thread, put it in there, give it a twist. That'll make it a little bit buggy. But all I do is just go tight on my when I dub it on my th thread. Sorry, not tight, but go loose just to make it a buggy look. Get a couple wraps on there like that. Once I got it nice and buggy, and then I'm gonna twist off tie off the head here. Make three or four turn whip finish. I like to usually do like three, oh sorry, two three turn whip finishes. Josh in his video, he likes to put a little bit of dubbing on that whip finish. I'm not so big on that because the brown color blends in real well. And then I'm just going to take my little brush here and make it a little bit more buggy like that. And there you see it uh, very fit. Very easy, quick finish fly. All right, guys, trying to keep this one short and sweet this week and uh, with a really cool quick tie. So that's what this one is. This is a very quick stone fly pattern that um, I like to fish. Well, I haven't actually got to fish it yet, um, but my friend Pat that I do the podcast with, that yes, we will have a podcast coming soon. I got a lot of new equipment and... Uh, Trying to work out the bugs and figure out how to use it yet. But uh, we'll have a podcast coming soon. But Pat fishes this fly quite regularly. And one of the things he does, right now it's coming up on springtime. The weather's getting hot. We got a couple days in the 60s here at my place. Um, little black stones are coming out. Pat ties this one in black and fishes as a little black stone and has having success with it. So give this fly a try. And uh, like always, guys, you need any of the material, hunt us up at wholesingersflyshop.com. You want me to tie any for you? Uh, just shoot me an email at wholesingersflyshop at gmail.com. So, thanks for watching, guys. And until next week, make sure you hit that subscribe button, give me the thumbs up, and leave a comment if you like. But until then, I'm Sean Holsinger.